in the first part of the video i have shown how you can build a simple linear elastic model in uh, abacus and then modify the input file of that model to replace the linear elastic material with the anisotropic ummdp material model we have explained the workflow for using this uh, subroutine but given only a little detail about these material parameters in this video i will discuss how you can define these parameters for your chosen anisotropic yield criterion and hardening model let's start with the different yield criterion based on how advanced the yield criterion that you have chosen it would require more and more experimental uh, data for example in a simple hill 48 anisotropic model you need the experimental hardening curve you need uh, the uh, experimental uh, stress value in uh, md or zero degree direction and uh, in addition you need the anisotropic ratio or langford coefficient in uh, zero degree 45 degree and 90 degree orientation whereas for the model that i will explain in this video bbc05 or bbc2005 the experimental data required are the hardening curve in zero degree orientation from where you can also find the initial yield stress of uh, the material in zero degree orientation as well as the initial yield stress of the same material at 45 degree orientation yield stress at 90 degree orientation yield stress from biaxial testing in addition you need the langford coefficient r in zero degree 45 degree and 90 degree as well as in the biaxial orientation so you need all of this experimental data to calibrate the model parameter for bbc05 so of course these uh, yield points can be directly found from the stress strain curve and uh, defining the point where the initial yield starts in each stress strain curve for each orientation 0 45 90 and biaxial but for defining the langford coefficient you need measurement from digital image correlation or dic so one way of doing it is to take any orientation for example md or zero degree orientation and then uh, do a tensile test together with the dic measurement a tip is you can do freely and easily uh, this dic measurement during your tensile test by placing your mobile camera and recording the video as this uh, test is performed and of course before that you have to put some sparkle pattern on top of that and you can achieve that by spraying paint from a usual paint can that you can find in the supermarket and once you have that video you can then analyze it in the free software com correlate and once you do that it is possible that uh, placing to virtual extensometer in the width direction and the length direction you can find the local strains here in the width direction so this strain will reduce in this width direction because if you pull this specimen the width is supposed to get contracted or reduced and in this direction in the length direction of course the strain gonna increase so at the yield point somewhere a point here and here if you take those values this is with strain epsilon w and if you divide that with the width strain plus the length strain and put a minus sign in front of that so this ratio is going to give you the Langford coefficient for this particular material orientation. As I said that this is in machine direction or zero degree. Similarly, you can calculate the Langford coefficient for 45 CD or any other in between 15, 30, 45 and so on. So, so far I have explained how you can get this uh, yield stresses and as well as how to get the Langford coefficients using uniaxial tensile test but for biaxial points you will need to do some sort of biaxial test or bulge test but uh, there is a way around you can also use uh, hill 48 or barla 89 prediction of uh, this uh, biaxial yield point and biaxial langford coefficient without doing the experiment of course they will not be very accurate but at least you get some sort of prediction so that using those point you can then calibrate the parameter required for this particular model in our case this is bbc05 
next for this calibration procedure you will need to do an optimization or in some cases to perform a Newton iteration to find the yield parameter I have a video in our channel that explains how you can use optimization to get the yield parameter for hill 48 but in this example I have used BBC 05 for which I have predicted the biaxial points here by using a hill 48 prediction and then use those parameters in Newton uh, iteration to get all the parameters necessary for BBC 05 if we check at the user manual of this UMMDP subroutine that you will get when you download that UMMDP subroutine files in that we can see for this Banabic BBC05 model the parameters that we need are a coefficient k this coefficient depends on the material crystallographic structure other than that the basic material parameters are a b l m and p q r material parameters here so by using this experimental points i have calculated these coefficients using newton iteration and next i have to know the hardening of for this material the blue curve shows the engineering stress strain curve and uh, this uh, orange curve shows the true stress strain curve but from this true stress strain if we further construct the plastic strain versus true stress curve so this is going to be this particular dashed curve so this curve will be used to define the hardening of our BBC 05 yield model this hardening can be used together with any other yield model just for clarification we can simply uh, represent this curve using a bilinear curve so first line second line although we have some error there a more convenient way is to use some of the established hardening model and then fit a curve for our experimental data here the black curve is our experimental data then we have a fitted a curve and find those coefficients such that this blue curve appears and then the coefficient value that we are gonna get we can use those directly in our user material subroutine UMMDP there are several hardening as we can see it could be linear Swift Ludwig but in our case we have used voice plus linear type so it has ID 5 that is so that would be significant later but uh, to start with that we know that uh, this hardening curve is defined with this particular equation and this sy0 is the initial ill stress and it has three more coefficients q b and h here p is the plastic strain and this hardening can be defined by using this uh, four numbers so if you work around with your engineering stress strain curve and get the true plastic strain versus true stress curve you can then type in your MATLAB CF tool this uh, will open up a curve fitting tool window there in the X data you can put your true plastic strain data and uh, in uh, Y data you can put all the stress that corresponds to those plastic strain data so this XY data will be basically the, the plastic strain and the true stress data once you have that you can directly copy this equation from here and put that equation here so before you put even this equation you have to make sure that you, you from this drop down you use custom equation now in this equation of course there it was sy0 or initial stress but from your machine direction or zero degree orientation stress strain curve you will get that first ill stress point so in my case it was 6.25 megapascal so i directly input uh, that value here and then for rest of this uh, uh, equation you have to replace this p or plastic strain with x and also this p with x so if i just replace this one to be x and this one to be x and i have already replaced this initial yield point and then fit this curve then as we already have a plastic strain in x and true stress in y so we will have a curve fitting uh, optimization that will give us back the value of those coefficient q b and h and with those equation our voice linear type uh, hardening curve has been defined same actually goes for any other hardening type you will just copy that equation 
replace this P with X, which would be your uh, true plastic strain, and then do the fitting, which will give you the value of these coefficients. Also see that if you want to define your elastic behavior using the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio, you can use a ID that is called zero. And if you use instead bulk modulus and modulus of rigidity, then the ID is one. So that means if we put an ID zero and immediately after that, we put the value of Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio, our linear elastic property of this material would be defined. Now let's see when we have edited our initial input file, we have put zero to begin with. That means this is a definition of elastic property using only Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. And immediately after that, I have given my Young's modulus, which is 240 megapascal. And after that, I have given my Poisson's ratio, which is 0 0.4. And after these three numbers, I will start defining my BBC 05 yield criterion parameters. So let's scroll down and find where uh, the definition for BBC 05 is given. And here we are back again. And we know the ID for BBC 05 is minus four. That should be followed by the exponent K and then A, B, L in the same order. I have done exactly the same. So after my elastic part is defined, and then of course separated by comma, I give the ID minus four, which is for BBC 05. And this is the value of my K. So as I said, uh, the K value is four. Usually it's the two K. Which, which makes it eight. So K can also be three or even some non-integer numbers. But uh, in our case, we used K to be four, such that this exponent 2K becomes eight. And the value of this parameter A was this, value of B was this, this was L and M and P, Q, R. So M and P, Q, R. So up to here, I have defined all the material parameter for BBC 05. And this ID shows that the next eight parameters belongs to a BBC 05 model. Similarly, as what happened here, zero means the next two numbers is Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. So of course, the yield parameters were not ended here. In the first line, we have to put more yield parameters, but we will always do like that. In a single line, we have only eight numbers. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So any parameter after that will not separate by comma, but we'll go to the next line and start putting those parameters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Of course, we have so far defined up to here, and we have to know now what are those numbers. Probably you have already guessed, those are for my voice plus linear type hardening. So the ID is five. So I put an five. So any number that follows should give us in order the initial ill stress, the Q that we got from our car fitting B and H, similarly that we got from the car fitting. So as you can see, the initial stress is 6.25. As I said, the value for Q is 2.69 after car fitting and value of B is 79.54 and value of H is 37.44. Now I have put a zero at the end that is totally optional. Zero means there is no kinematic hardening. You can also skip that, but there is no issue if you just comma zero, that means it's just a linear hardening. No card kinematic hardening is involved. This is totally optional. And by that we have the definition of the whole material. So again, I made sure there are eight here, eight here, and then rest of them are in the third line. So eight, eight, 16, 17, 18, 19. So there are 19 constant. So user material constant, I put this number 19. And immediately after that, this is star depth variable. I also put 19. It's actually less, but it did not uh, throw me any error. So I just, to be safe, just put the same number there. But uh, that's definitely not scientific. You can be a bit more clever to going to see what is the number of dependent variable. So the similar definition will work for any other yield criterion. For example, if we use Hill 48, then of course, after this uh, uh, linear elastic Young's modulus Poisson's ratio definition, I will put this uh, ID to be one, and then that would be followed by the value of F, G, H, L, M, N. So F, G, H, L, M, N, and after that, we will remove, uh, 
we, we don't need this placeholder so we can just remove if we have the value of FGHLM and uh, at the end of that we will have this uh, hardening curve uh, voice linear type so in that case we will have one two three parameters followed by id 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and immediately after those 11 number we will have this hardening parameters we will always make sure there are only eight number in one line and by that the input uh, file editing is uh, finished you are probably already noticed from the last video this material and uh, this material name should be exactly the same and as our input file is ready then we would be able to just copy and paste one by one each of these three lines and enter and uh, we should get our job bbc05 if is the name of your input file get running and then of course we can view the results using this particular command that i have already shown in our previous video here are some bonus information that in a yield surface each point represents the value that you get from a different type of experimental testing so a yield surface that uh, uses more and more information about uh, the experimental data uh, the more accurate the yield function becomes that means a bbc 2005 would be almost as accurate with uh, barla 2004 or like similar accurate with barla 2000 whereas uh, hill 90 or hill 48 they are gonna be less flexible yield criterion and if you use for example this advanced yield criterion your simulation results are supposed to be more accurately representing your experimental measurements because that's in the definition of those yield criterion so that's all so it has been a vast topic i could not cover everything related to the yield criterion parameter optimization or using a newton iteration method but uh, if you request in future i can try to cover a bit more about uh, how you can calibrate this uh, yield criterion parameter if you already know these experimental values